Good morning, everyone. Today is June the 10th, and this is the Futures in Five. I've been away for a week uh, traveling with my parents, um, traveling to see my parents. All right, so here we are, topping and topping. Let's take a look at the difference between the motions of a tight, you know, standard MACD, the 1224 9 and maybe a bit slower one, everything still points to upside formations. Folks, this is a very, very strong counter trend bounce. The question might be, Emery, why is this still counter trend? Well, because in the last little bit, this has been a high and then a low and then a lower high and another lower low. So what I'm doing is trying to reverse this motion if that's about to happen. If it does happen, and I move back into bullish territory, it stands to reason that coming back to retest these edges right down here seem fairly important. Now, let's talk about why this is moving up. I believe it's just a standard squeeze, right? A lot of folks are saying, hey, listen, job numbers came in weak. That means the Fed is going to cut rates. If the Fed cuts rates, everything will be just fine and dandy with the market. So we know the Fed is trying to take a look at how they might position in order to uh, cut that off recession at the head and then still worry about what's going on with tariff formations and all that sort of thing. Well, the fact is that this sort of counter trend, just fierce counter trend bounce that's really 160 points or so in just a few days we don't normally see that sort of motion, okay? So let's go back and, and uh, see if we can see anything on this contract, this particular contract. And we're looking all the way here. And we can see that that's a little rounded, and this is a little rounded. That's pretty steep, and that's pretty steep. This upside motion is absolutely gigantic. And so when we take a look at motion like this, we have to think about, one, is it normal? It doesn't look particularly normal, just taking a look since, you know, the last quarter. So we don't normally see these incredibly steep moves to the upside without seeing some sort of pullback. So the pullback action is really what we have to be concerned about. Is it a pullback that's going to hold or is it going to be uh, a pullback that continually fades? I have no idea, but my role and goal is to position. And since if I took a very, let's change this. Let's make this something like 10, okay? If we make it something like 10, we're gonna see that what we've got is a bullish formation up here and a bullish formation down here. You don't wanna fight those two things, right? But what you do wanna see is as it moves farther away from that moving average, you expect it to come towards that average. And so that average is sitting way down here at 73 or so. Let's, um. Let's change that indicator to something that we can see, right? A 2873 right there could be thereabouts, right? But this is what we expect with this kind of adaptive average. If it slips away, it tends to come back and then move sideways. So my thought is the following, don't buy the breakout. You say, Emery, you just spent five minutes talking about all these things in the market and then you come back to the same conclusion. Uh, yes, and there's a very good reason for that. Um, it's because in this environment, as the VIX continues to rise, remember the VIX was at about 11 and then it started really moving and now it's about 16 and it's still giving us higher lows and higher highs. It's just a little bit of a whipsaw action itself, but it is on the rise. And so if you take a look at the VIX on the rise in general, and then you take a look at these charts, you know that in the presence of trend, you want to behave with trend, pullbacks are buy zones. If you pick a shallow pullback, that's not a bad idea. In this case, you want to watch on these edges. Remember, this area near 2915 is the initial breakdown zone that alerted us to go short, you know, right here at this failed retest area. Around the edge of May, we said, hey, listen, we want to watch for the failed retest of that edge. All of this region was a breakdown zone. So we'll see what happens, right? My thought is that it's still a counter trend move and um, you just can't fight counter trend moves. So that's why I'm always talking about taking profit when you see it, as opposed to thinking it's going to be a great big long cycle of some kind that's not going to make you annoyed giving up all your profit. All right, let's take a look at the NQ. The NQ is recovering. You know, we've had this level up for quite some time. 
same sort of formation, right? The same sort of formation. If I take a look and I pop up the second one that gives us two different edges, we can really see that it's still all very, very bullish, right? Very bullish coming into resistance, and it's got a lot more power in that resistance zone here than it had over here. Doesn't mean it's not going to have trouble, but what it does likely mean is that pullbacks are going to hold and we're still looking at higher lows if this chart breaks down. Do I think it's gonna break down? Yeah, I do. That's just me. Um, I am a little bit bearish overall in uh, the general sense of everything. And so this bounce, I, I really believe is squeeze action. People just caught on the wrong side of the move. And this 7475, really, really important in general. Okay, above that, we're looking at another 100 points to the north in terms of the next area of congestion. And that really is what we want to do. If we take a look at, this is, a, uh, yeah, let's take a look at this one again, the 10. We're seeing that we have upside trend here, upside trend here, and the chart's rotating over just a little bit as it tries to come in and kiss that moving average. Pullbacks or buy zones, you know, anywhere in the 7440 to 7414 area, which is, you know, right around there, gives us a potential bounce zone. Could it run off to the top? Absolutely. Absolutely. Pullbacks or buy zones. If you take a long here, you're going to have an extended stretch of potential risk that you take on. Well, take a look at this. Big move up, came to the edge here, right up over the top pulled all the way back and now holding again. This formation, beautiful completion, absolutely 100% reversal pattern. And this is really unusual, but extremely um, noteworthy because it just gives us a perfect formation that reverses. So what we're going to do because it's done, we're gonna delete it and now we're going to be looking at, all right, what are we, what are we thinking about? Well, <clears throat> A pullback here at 26,000, fairly important. Let's create an alert there. If it doesn't hold, we've got ourselves uh, an essential fade back to uh, a support zone. And now, you know, could it be all the way down here or all the way up here, potentially, right? So we're looking at 25,768. What should this chart do? Well, again, how ordinary is this kind of motion? If we just look at what we've got right here, how ordinary is this? That would be not very. And a not very ordinary move is going to have a reversal. Just like this big breakdown here, that's not an ordinary move. It's going to find support, going to bounce. This is the same thing. So my suspicion is that we are looking at very jagged action over the next 60 days. Very, very jagged price action. And so what could we potentially be looking at next? A rise into this area that fades or... Um, a pullback into this area that holds. My thought is if we run with trend and we'll do the same thing with this uh, adaptive average, if we go to 10, we're going to see that this one has really run right on top of everything and it is holding long. So any kinds of pullbacks into this area, 26,048, um, let's move it right there, 26,040. That's going to be the first pass to the long side. If we start losing this 26,020, things get a little bit dicier. But as it sits right now, everything is really quite bullish. Taking a look at oil, oil also had a completed pattern. Now, a lot of folks are calling for more downside in oil. Oil could be sitting at a little bit of a rotation spot. Um, you know, the dollar also at a rotation spot. And so that's kind of interesting. My suspicion, because of this location, is that our price action should fade and then bounce. And the big number for it to really hold is this area right here at um, somewhere around 52.90. That's what we're looking at right here, 54.50, big resistance zone. You can see a lot of pressure but the slope is holding. And so what we have to anticipate is that at this stage with all of this motion, and I'll move this to a 10 for us so that we can see what's going on. If we do this, what you'll see is that pullbacks around this zone should give us a bounce environment, right? 
If it loses this uh, 5370 to 5360 area, we've got another problem. But my suspicion is that this chart tries to hold its edges up just a little. Listen, if it can't, we are going to be right back down testing 51 and potentially below that. All right, lastly, we'll take a look at gold. Gold is, uh, is this the right gold contract? doesn't look like the right gold contract, does it? Let's see. Oops. All right. Let's look at the, let's just look at the front month contract. That'll be pretty good. Looking at this front month contract. All right, taking a look at this area, I did, uh, if you're reading the blog or you see it on See It Market, I talked about this area at 1347 being a very likely first pass reversal pattern. Now we're looking at potentially a retest of 1319 all the way to 1306. If we look at our template here, we're going to see that we do have a cross and all of them are, are pretty much obeying it at this structure, right? So what I suspect is bounces into this area, 1338, 1335, going to initiate a short, and we are in a little bit of a bounce. The stop action would be, I don't know, four or five points wide, so it's a little bit risky, um, and then the fade action would only be into a higher low because I do believe that gold has made its lows for the year. I do not see gold going backwards this year. All right, that's it for the Futures in 5. Good luck trading today.